Hey y'all, this is Kalicia from MTV's Are You The One? And make sure you stay locked in to Jay Jackson on Ustream Radio. It's your boy Jay Jackson, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Jay Jackson. Of course, brought to you by UStreamRadio.com. Log on, watch, listen. Now, I have a pleasure and an honor to be here. She came all the way here to talk to us and everything. Miss Kalicia Chestnut, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. First of all, I want to start off by saying it's a pleasure as well as an honor for you to come out here. Pretty, you know, busy, busy schedule. Oh. Yes, <laughs> just to come down here and talk to us. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I want to get right okay. into it. Get into it. Hey, so let me ask you, coming from a small town in Alabama and everything, how was the whole experience? It was different. It was really, like, ground-shaking for me because, you know, I'm just so used to simple life and going being in LA and Hawaii and a mansion with production and it, I was like I don't understand all this. So it was definitely I was a fish out of water but you know eventually I kind of started just I think the the hardest part was trying to find a way to you know be yourself and stay grounded and stay who you are but also flow with what everything else is going on. So it was cool but I, I think I got the hang of it a little. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask you, were, were you, are you used to, you know, being into a competitive field as well as being on camera? I wasn't really when I started the show. This was like the first thing I'd done that was really televised. You know, I mm-hmm. did, you know, I guess growing up, I was a cheerleader and stuff like that. So we might get on the news every now and then, mm-hmm. but not a reality show or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, so this is all new. So, I mean, you know, you used to being around a lot of people and stuff, you know, cheerleading, college. Yeah, no, I'm definitely used to being a a social butterfly. You know, Mm -hmm. I was a cheerleader. I was in a sorority in college, you know. So, yeah, I'm definitely used to, you know, Mm -hmm. attention and people. Yeah, I wanted to ask you because this was definitely something different and everything. Being on the MTV cast, the show, how was that experience? I know that had to be out of pocket. It absolutely was. I I wish I could kind of put it into words how crazy it was. Because, I mean, first of all, I'm in a house with 19 other people from just just all different walks of life. And trying to understand, be friends with these people, yet find my man. You know, it's just, it was crazy. And then we didn't know until we got there that we were competing for a million dollars. So that's when the the heat started coming. And it was just so many dynamics of being in that house. It got overwhelming, but I think it really, you just, sometimes you have to step back and say, enjoy this experience. This is an experience of a lifetime. Just have fun with it. Now, I wanted to get, for the people that don't know about the show or anything, tell us a little bit about the show, you know. Okay, Are You The One is like a social experiment. And mm-hmm. basically what they did was they had 10 guys and 10 girls, and they placed us all in the house. But before we went in the house, we went through extensive testing through psychologists and matchmakers. And um, they found us a perfect match okay. <laughs> in the house. So we just had to, through dating and, you know, interactions, figure out which guy or girl is your perfect match and if you found that perfect match you split a million dollars well that gotta be kind of hard because <laughs> finding your match i mean if you were trying if you already knew how to find your match would you be on the show no that was exactly <laughs> the point we all sucked at relationships and it was just weird and it was kind of like you know having to think about what went wrong in your relationships mm-hmm. What kind of person are you attracted to? What kind of person do you like? What are the qualities that you are usually attracted to but ends up burning you in the end? All of that stuff you had to to take into consideration because these were the questions that we were asked during our interview process. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, it was rough. It was rough. You know, (laughs) to me, it it seemed like everybody, when they left there, had something to learn as well as becoming a relationship expert, you know, dealing with this. Well, yeah, I mean, I think... Being in the house itself and having to find your perfect match teaches you a lot about yourself. 
So you have to, you know, figure out what do I like? You know, what am I attracted to? What would be best for me as a, a lifelong partner? So it was kind of practice for marriage, kind of, yeah. sort of. So it was kind of like you had to shift your whole, like, play date and mindset mm -hmm. and think, like, what do I want my husband to be? What do I want my wife to be? So, ooh, it was heavy. I can heavy. <laughs> now, I know the one question a lot of people have. How was it being in a house with... 10 guys, 10 women competing for the two, I would say, craziest thing, money and relationship. How was, how was that experience? It was, it was fun. It was drama. Uh, I think the dramatic part about it was that people would make connections mm -hmm. with, you know, you know, a little relationship, a connection, and they go to the truth booth, and the truth booth is kind of the only way you'll know if you're a perfect match or not, it's this little hut and you step in, it scans mm -hmm. you up and down and either it's no match or you're a perfect match. Oh, wow. And um, people would go to the truth booth, find out they weren't a match, but they got so connected that they wouldn't let each other go. And people mm -hmm. are like, no, y'all got to chill. You need to keep talking to other people so you can figure out who your match is. But they was, you know, they felt like they were connected. And I think that was mainly the part. And then people which obviously weren't a match. They were always fighting and arguing, and mm -hmm. but, you know, they might be having sex or something like yeah. that. So they kind of, you know how sex kind of, you know, connects you, and you even though you hate each other in real life mm -hmm. because you're banging each other every night, you kind of think it's something there. It was, it was weird. It was just weird. I state claims on my man, though. I knew he <laughs> was pretty early. Well, no, actually, the first episode... He, he pissed me off real bad. Um, we have to go to the matchup ceremony, and that's when they kind of tell us how many matches we got correct after you pick who you want. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. It was just kind of messed up. He was like, uh, we ended up getting picked last. Okay. We were put together by default, and he was like, well, though everybody I wanted got picked, so I'm stuck with her. And I was pissed <laughs> off. I was like, I cannot believe you said that. But we ended up being a perfect match, so. That was cool. Oh, wow. I, I know this This has definitely had to be an experience and everything. It was. It was absolute craziness. It was absolute craziness. But I had the time of my life in Hawaii. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, now, I wanted to ask you. Now, coming coming from, you know, a church background, coming from, you know, you know it just had to come. How, how was family, friends, the show, relationships, talk to me? Now, when I initially presented it to mm -hmm. my family. They were like, what? It's like, how did this even happen? Yes. But, you know, and uh, to be honest, like, I kept them out of it, out of the casting process for a mm -hmm. long time. Like, I really didn't. Like, I mentioned it to them. I was like, well, you know, I'm kind of doing something for MTV. And they were like, what? And I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to try it out. And I think it really got real. Mm -hmm. When I was like, when the, I got the call and said I made it, and I was like, okay, we need to sit down and talk about the fact that I'm oh. finna go on national television. But I think it took them some, maybe a couple days to warm up to the idea. But I think once they said and thought about the fact that, you know, I'm not going to change who I am just because the camera's in front of my face. You know, I'm not the one. And I think that's what they were concerned about, you know, me cussing and yelling and screaming mm -hmm. and fighting and having sex on. I, I, that's just not what I do in real life. So why would you think that I would just change exactly who I am, in, 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 especially in a negative way, yes. on TV? So once they kind of figured out that I'm still the same Lily mm -hmm. that's, you know, that they've known forever, they were like, okay, I mean, you can go anywhere. I trust you to go anywhere because I know who you are. And, you know, I was going to ask you that because, you know, reality TV or any TV change a lot of people. And I was going to say what kept you grounded with your strength to be able to remain who you are and not get caught into all of the, everything that was going on around you? To be honest, I think it, it was the confidence and security I had within myself. I really think that people that go on television or reality shows or wherever, they're insecure, mm -hmm. so they feel the need to portray something that they are not to get people to, to like them. Okay. That's what I don't really like, mm -hmm. but that's not who I am. Like I'm, I'm secure in who I am. I know mm -hmm. who I am, and I didn't have to pretend for nobody. I mean, if you don't like me, cool. If you do, 
even better. I don't care. I'm still going to do me. So yeah, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> did you find your match? I absolutely did find my match. His name is Dylan from North Dakota. Tonight is when we find out if everybody finds their perfect match. This is the last time we had 10 tries to find out if we, if all 10 of us, all if no, if all 20 of us would match up correctly. This is the 10th try. So... It's all or nothing. It's a million dollars or bro. Now, how can anybody get in contact with you, social media? Kalicia. I'm the East. Like I said, if you're looking for me, you will find me. <laughs> it's Kalicia, C-O-L-E-Y-S-I-A. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm really an Instagram head, so if you really want to talk to me, just hit me up on Instagram. I do talk to Twitter because a lot of my fans are on Twitter. I know that you do a lot of motivational speaking. Yes, yes. I definitely have a, a mentoring program called Raw. And it is my baby. I love it so much. And basically what it is is getting girls, and especially young girls, to learn to love themselves. Like I was saying, mm -hmm. raw. Like at your rawest, at your rawest form, which is the way God sees us. And, you know, learn to love yourself without tons of makeup, without we, you know, without enhancement. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cool to do that, but you need to get that full, that inner confidence and let it exude on the outside, you know, and that's really what I'm all about. I love seeing girls walk confidently. It's just, it, it, it does something to me. <laughs> you heard it. Hey, take it from the match expert now. She's a match expert. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> I would say, hey, make sure y'all tune into the new show. I mean, tune into the show tonight. You find out who get the money, who got the perfect match and everything. That goes on tonight, right? Yep, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 Central. Hey, make sure you tune in. It's your boy, Jay Jackson. I'm here with the beautiful Kalicia Chestnut. All right. Bye, y'all. Keep it locked. Stay tuned.